Welcome to Cancer Care Northwest chemotherapy class. This class is designed to help patients understand chemotherapy and biotherapy. Our goal is to help keep patients healthy throughout the treatment process. Please review the new patient chemotherapy treatment materials you receive from your oncologist. The materials in that packet reinforce the information in this presentation and is a great reference as you journey through treatment. If you have not yet received it, ask for it at your next office visit. Or we can send it to you in the mail if you call 509-228-1000. This presentation is a general overview covering possible side effects, what you can do about them, and when you should call us. Your oncology team will teach you regarding possible side effects related to your specific treatment. You may take notes, view, pause, and even rewind this presentation as many times as necessary, going at your own pace so that you don't miss important information about your treatment and care. What is chemotherapy and immunotherapy? Chemotherapy and immunotherapy are both treatments that fight cancer. While they seem alike, they work in different ways. Immunotherapy works with your immune system. These drugs call on your immune system to attack the cancer in a very targeted way. Chemotherapy attacks the cancer cells directly, yet in a more general way. Please see the National Cancer Institute website if you wish to explore this and other cancer topics further. There are hundreds of drugs used to treat cancer. There's more drugs in the research pipeline, especially targeted and immunotherapies that are constantly being released. Our knowledgeable oncology providers keep on top of the latest treatments for all cancers. Cancer Care Northwest has an active research arm that has been integral in developing some therapies that are now used as standard of practice worldwide. If you're interested in participating in any cancer research trials and it would be appropriate to your situation, discuss this possibility with your oncology provider. Your specific treatment depends on multiple factors, such as the type of cancer you have. Therapies now are more targeted than ever to specific cancers, some even focusing on your own cancer cell DNA. Treatment depends on the location of your cancer. Some cancers are in specific body locations and some are diffuse throughout the body. Treatment also depends on the extent of your cancer, sometimes referred to as the tumor burden or how much cancer is in your body. Your general health is always a focus, a key focus of your oncology team. Various evidence-based treatment options are discussed with you considering your general health. We closely monitor how you are tolerating treatment throughout the entire treatment journey. How does chemotherapy work? Normal cells grow and die in a controlled way. They mirror life. They have a birth, which is cell division, and an expected lifespan. They do not invade their intended borders. They deteriorate and die in a programmed way. Normal cells are constantly being replaced by new generations of normal cells. Cancer cells divide and form more cells without the control seen in normal cells. They usually grow exponentially fast and are invasive, not respecting borders, so they frequently grow into other areas of the body if not stopped. Cancer cells arise out of normal cells whose DNA has a mistake. They keep growing faster than normal cells until they no longer resemble their parent cells. All cancers arise out of cells with damaged DNA. There are a variety of theories and hypotheses regarding the causes of cancer. What we do know, the damage to the DNA can be by environmental exposure to cancer-causing agents called carcinogens. Cancer can also emerge because of a genetic factor or mutation or the failure of the immune system to survey and remove damaged DNA cells. Chemotherapy stops cancer cells from growing or multiplying. However, healthy cells can be harmed by chemotherapy agents. Systemic inflammatory reactions can occur with use of targeted biotherapies. These lead to the side effects we will be reviewing in this presentation. 
This knowledge will help you to recognize if you're having a reaction in time for you to inform us so that we can treat the reaction early. What is the goal of chemotherapy? Cure. 30 to 40 years ago, there were only about six chemotherapy agents used on a variety of cancers. Hundreds of therapeutic agents have been developed since then with more specificity and efficacy so that some cancers are now curable. Control. If the cancer cannot be cured often, we can keep the cancer from spreading or slow the cancer's growth so that if and when the cancer reemerges, it keeps responding to subsequently developed treatments, adding months and even years to a patient's life. Prophylaxis is the treatment of areas that may become potential sites of cancer. An example would be having a preventative mastectomy or removal of ovaries because of a familial genetic positive history that indicates the patient is strongly genetically prone to developing breast or ovarian cancer. Genetic testing precedes this type of treatment. Palliation is a process of relieving symptoms caused by cancer, although a cure is not expected. Examples are radiation therapy or surgery to debulk a tumor that is impinging on vital organs or nerves. How is chemotherapy given? In the chemo suite, we mostly administer chemo by the intravenous method or inside the vein. This includes using either a peripheral vein in the arm or through a central line that is usually placed in the chest. While some patients have other types of central access devices, a chest port placed in the upper right or left chest is the most common. A chest port includes a catheter that is tunneled under the skin into a large vein that leads to the atrium of the heart. Medication is administered through a special needle into a self-closing pad attached to the catheter. Chest port placement is an outpatient procedure done by an interventional radiologist or surgeon before treatment starts. Specially trained chemotherapy nurses in our clinic use sterile technique to access, administer medications, and deaccess central line devices. Some chemotherapy agents can only be given through a central line access device. Chemotherapy treatment time can vary from short infusions of a half to two hours or longer infusions from four to six hours. Other ways chemo can be given is through oral tablets or capsules, which your oncologist orders through a specialty pharmacy. These are serious potent chemotherapy drugs that need to be taken exactly as directed and need to be locked away from children. The patient needs to keep a calendar and a notebook to record dates the patient is taking the medication. Also, the patient needs to document date, time, and duration of any side effects in their notebook. Patient calls to a triage nurse also need to be noted, including date, time, name of the triage nurse, and a brief overview of the conversation. Intramuscular is injection of chemotherapy in the muscle, usually the deltoid muscle of the arm or the gluteal muscle of the hip. Intraarterial is chemo injected inside an artery. Intracavitary is chemo administered inside a body cavity, such as the intraperitoneal space, which is inside the area containing the abdominal organs. Intralesional is administration of chemo inside the tumor itself. Subcutaneous administration is just under the skin. And topical administration is to the surface of the affected area. How long will treatment last? Well, it depends on the type and extent of your cancer. What's the goal of treatment? Cure, control, palliative, and which drugs are used? Be aware that these drugs have gone through clinical trials to determine safe and effective doses and administration times. Finally, it depends on how your body responds to treatment. Therefore, it's so important for you to write down any side effects and call us early if you experience them or are feeling ill.
A common question from patients is if they can take other medications during their cancer treatment. Well, other drugs can interfere with chemo, so we want you to tell us about all drugs, prescription and non-prescription, every time you visit the office. Keep a current list with you. It can make a difference in your treatment outcome. And your oncologist wants to make informed decisions with you in order to partner toward positive results. Please include all herbal meds, complementary and non-medical treatments. Grapefruit and grapefruit juice commonly interfere with many drugs, not just chemo drugs, so it's a good idea to avoid. Because chemo targets fast-growing cancer cells, fast-growing healthy cells tagged here with a red symbol can also be affected or damaged. We are going to cover these more extensively in slides that follow, but be aware that fatigue is the single most commonly experienced side effect. It may extend well beyond the time of chemo or radiation. Fatigue is the symptom patients are least prepared for. It has several causative factors mostly that your body is working hard to fight the disease, plus the effects of the disease and the therapy. Track your fatigue in your notebook, rated on a scale of zero to 10. Zero is no fatigue, and at a 10 you basically can do nothing. In other words, you're laying down most of the time. Inform the nurse and oncologist of your fatigue rating at each office visit. Regarding the possible side effects of chemo, it's important to keep in mind that not all chemo drugs cause all side effects and not all patients experience side effects. Effect on blood cells. Your white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets are fast growing cells. Your mature white blood cells seek out and consume foreign substances such as viruses and bacteria inside your body. As previously mentioned, chemotherapy is designed to go after fast-growing cancer cells. Chemotherapy, unfortunately, can also attack fast-growing normal cells such as your white blood cells, inhibiting white blood cells from being optimally effective. This is why we frequently perform blood draws to closely monitor your white blood cells especially. If needed, we can stimulate their formation in the bone marrow with an injection of white blood cell stimulating growth factor. We stress this teaching because reduction of white blood cells is one side effect of chemo that can be life-threatening if you develop an infection. Because of the effect of chemotherapy can have on your white blood cells, we want you to call us day or night for a fever of 100.4. That is 100.4, not 104, 100.4. Call us day or night for shaking chills. While you might develop an infection, you might not develop a fever. But if you have Bone shaking chills, that can be another indication of an infection going on somewhere in your body that needs to be treated promptly. Other reasons to call include pain, redness, and swelling of your central line port or IV access site, sweating, diarrhea, burning on urination, severe cough, sore throat, or short of breath, abdominal pain, or new vaginal discharge. Call as soon as possible during our business hours, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. After office hours and on the weekends, your issue will be addressed by the Cancer Care Northwest provider on call. Use the same number. We advise patients to call early in the day so the triage nurse can address your issue and notify your doctor and we can help you as quickly as possible. Prevention of infection is the goal. So wash your hands frequently. This is the most important prevention. You wanna lather up and sing a couple rounds of happy birthday and that will give you the needed 20 seconds of hand washing. Clean cuts immediately with soap and water and use an antiseptic.
don't cut or tear the cuticles of your nails. Use lotion, oil, or ointment and creams to soften, soothe, and heal skin if it becomes dry and cracked. Ask your primary or chemo nurse for suggested products. Stay away from people who are ill, crowds, and recently immunized children. Don't get any immunization shots without checking first with your oncologist. Wear protective gloves when cleaning. Avoid animal litter boxes, bird cages, reptiles, fish tanks, and gardening, especially if your white blood cells are low. Clean your rectal area gently but thoroughly after each bowel movement and treat irritated tissue with a triple antibiotic ointment or zinc oxide ointment. These act as protective barriers as well as foster healing. Management of infection. If your white blood cells are abnormally low, your provider will refer to this as neutropenia. Mature white blood cells are called neutrophils. They are the most prevalent type of white blood cells. They are the worker white blood cells. Neutro means neutral and penia means lack of. Lack of neutralizing white blood cells that go after and kill bacteria and viruses within your bloodstream and other tissues leaves you vulnerable to an overwhelming infection. If you have signs and symptoms of infection, you probably need to be on an appropriate antibiotic. Antibiotics, by the way, also kill healthy bacteria in your gut. So eat yogurt with active probiotics while you are taking antibiotics. Report if you develop diarrhea while taking antibiotics to the oncologist. Your oncologist likely will order a shot that will boost your white blood cell growth. It can be called something like Neupogen, Neulasta, Granex, or Zarzeo. The oncologist may also reduce your chemotherapy dose to decrease the stress on the bone marrow production of white blood cells. And sometimes chemotherapy needs to be delayed until your white blood cell counts are increased. While safe food handling is important all the time, it is especially important when your white blood cells are low and you are at risk for infection. Check cell by and use by dates. Avoid foods from self-serve bulk containers or bins. Buy pasteurized dairy, juices, and honey only. Pasteurization is partial sterilization of a product to make it safe for consumption and improve its keeping quality. Do not purchase or consume raw sprouts. Hand washing before handling food, 20 seconds with soap and water. Thaw meats in refrigerator away from raw fruits and vegetables. Use a clean cutting board for fresh produce and a separate one for raw meat, fish, and poultry. When cooking meats, use a food thermometer. Meats should reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit and poultry should be cooked to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Cook eggs until whites and yolks are completely firm. Wash fruits and vegetables. Peeling fruits and vegetables is important if your white blood cells are low. Check with your oncologist if you are neutropenic, as the oncologist may want you to avoid fresh fruit and vegetables until your white blood cell count has recovered sufficiently. When dining out, avoid salad bars, delicatessens, buffets, potlucks, and sushi. Signs and symptoms of low red blood cells include extreme fatigue, dizziness or lightheadedness may occur, Pale skin, tendency to feel cold, especially in your hands and feet, fingers and toes. Shortness of breath, headaches, irregular heart rate. You need to report occurrence of these symptoms to your oncologist. If you are experiencing anemia, rest, take naps, limit your activities, prioritizing them for what and who is important to you. Accept help, allowing others the joy of being able to help you. Change position slowly. Eat a well-balanced, nutrient-dense diet of proteins, complex carbohydrates, adequate fluids, and calories. This includes nutrient-rich supplement drinks like Boost, Breeze, and Ensure. What are adequate fluids? 
According to the Mayo Clinic, an adequate daily fluid intake is about 16 cups of fluids for men and about 11 cups of fluids a day for women. These recommendations cover fluids from water, other beverages, and food. About 20% of daily fluid intake usually comes from food and the rest from drinks. Some drinks can be dehydrating, like drinks with caffeine or drinks with alcohol and drinks with sugar. If you are eating well and drink 8 8 ounce glasses of water and non-dehydrating fluids a day, you'll have this covered. Finally, Sometimes a transfusion of packed red blood cells is needed. Transfusions take place in the outpatient infusion unit of a hospital. You will be sent to the hospital lab the day before to have your blood drawn so it can be typed and cross-matched for your infusion to take place usually the following day. Decreased platelets called thrombocytopenia means you have an increased risk of bleeding. A thrombocyte is another word for platelet, and penia means lack of. Monitor and document and inform your oncologist if you bleed or bruise easily, if you develop small red or purplish blue spots under the skin anywhere on your body, if you notice your urine has a red or pink color, if you have black or bloody bowel movements, if you experience bleeding from gums or nose, if you have new vaginal bleeding, if you are dizzy, if you experience severe headaches or vision changes, and if you notice increased weakness. Preventing decreased platelets and bleeding. You can help prevent decreased platelets and bleeding by not using aspirin, ibuprofen, or other antiplatelet medications known collectively as NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, unless approved by your oncologist. Avoid cuts. Avoid contact sports. Be careful with oral care and nose blowing. Use an extra soft toothbrush and shave with an electric razor. Lab draws. Patients who are receiving chemo or immunotherapy will need to have blood work completed prior to or on the day of their office visit because we need to check white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets, among other things. The med techs will draw blood from the antecubital area of the arm, that's the depression in your arm opposite your elbow, where it bends, or a finger stick if only minimal blood is needed. Remember, the med techs and phlebotomists in our labs are not licensed to draw blood from your port, pick line, or phoresis catheter. Another important point about your blood. Occasionally the blood can go into a state where it wants to clot too easily. Although one effect of chemotherapy can be reducing the number of platelets putting you at an increased risk for bleeding, there are conditions specific to cancer patients that can make them also at risk for developing blood clots in their vascular systems. DVT means deep vein thrombosis. That's a clot in the vein of either of the legs or arms. So you need to report the following right away, day or night. Swelling in one extremity and not the other. Accompanied by edema, a depression or pit is left for two to three seconds after you press then lift your finger off the swollen area of that extremity. Pain in the leg, especially when weight bearing but is relieved when you lie down and your leg is elevated. PE stands for pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary means lung and embolism means obstruction of blood flow in an artery, usually by a clot. So it's a blood clot in the lung. So you need to report right away, day or night, if you're having any chest pain, especially while breathing, if you're having shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, or rapid breathing, which would be 24 breaths per minute or greater. If you have a cough, which might produce a pink bloody sputum, and you possibly might have a slight fever. So your oncologist frequently monitors your complete blood count, also referred to as a CBC, for very low white blood cells, which means you have a reduced ability to fight infection. 
also for very low red blood cells, which means your tissues are being starved of oxygen carrying red blood cells. Additionally, waste products build up in your tissues since there aren't as many red blood cells to carry it away, which is another function of red blood cells. And your oncologist monitors your CBC for very low platelet cells, which means you are at increased risk for bleeding. Nausea and vomiting. Nausea is the most dreaded side effect of chemotherapy. But we have effective anti-nausea pre-meds. These meds prevent or minimize nausea. They are administered before patients receive chemotherapy regimens that are known to cause nausea. The choices of anti-nausea drugs depend on the type of chemo drugs used and the treatment course. Symptoms usually start a few hours after treatment and last a short time, but it can be delayed. Before you start treatment, your provider may also prescribe anti-nausea meds that you will be able to have on hand at home. Use them on an as-needed basis after your chemo treatment. You will be instructed to take them at the first inkling of nausea. Some other things you can do to help manage nausea and vomiting include eating dry cereal, toast, or crackers before getting up in the morning, sucking on ice chips, drinking clear liquids like broth, water, ginger ale is good, and so is tea, suck on ginger hard candy, eat small frequent meals throughout the day, but especially use the anti-nausea medication you have on hand at home at the first inkling of nausea. Additionally, you will want to avoid lying flat for at least two hours after a meal to avoid reflux, nausea, and vomiting. Avoid greasy or fried foods and overly sweet foods. Also consider avoiding your favorite food if you are nauseated, because if you get sick after eating your favorite food, it's likely it will no longer be your favorite food. Mouse sores. Chemotherapy can affect cells lining the entire tube of the GI tract from the mouth to the rectum. Stomatitis, mucositis, and esophagitis is inflamed soft tissue of mouth or throat or esophagus. Painful open lesions, an infection caused by normal mouth bacteria, can occur when you have a suppressed immune system. In other words, you're at risk for mouth sores when your white blood cells are too low. Dry mouth is caused by chemo and or radiation therapy resulting in decreased normal saliva production. Discuss with your chemo and or radiation nurse whether your treatment will make you prone to dry mouth and mouth sores. He or she can discuss strategies to prevent and treat those conditions. It's key to get on top of this side effect early. Avoid harsh mouthwash. Use salt, soda, rinse recipe listed here from the beginning of your chemotherapy treatment to help prevent mouth sores. Don't wait until you have mouth sores to start using it. This formula is part of good oral hygiene. See your dentist. You want to see your dentist before starting chemo to have a good evaluation of your mouth health. Have your teeth clean, cavities filled, any abscessed teeth resolved, gum disease, or poorly fitting dentures addressed. Ask the dentist the best way to brush and floss your teeth during chemotherapy. If you are on bone strengthening medications called bisphosphonates, have the dentist evaluate and monitor your jawbone health. Jawbone breakdown, also called necrosis, is a possible side effect of bisphosphonate treatment. Verify with your provider or RN as to which brand of bone strengthener you are receiving. Managing mouth sores. Soothing foods like ice cream, milkshake, soft fruits, applesauce, cooked cereals, cottage cheese, mac and cheese, custards and gelatin are great choices. Avoid tomatoes, citrus fruits or juices, spicy or salty foods, raw vegetables, nuts, granola, toast, and very hot foods. During oral care, check your mouth with a flashlight and be sure to report any white patches or lesions to your oncologist at first detection. 
he or she can send in a prescription medication to your pharmacy for you to help soothe and heal those sores. For dry mouth, suck on ice chips, popsicles, sugarless hard candy, or chew sugarless gum. Moisten dry foods with butter, gravy, and sauces. Dunk dry foods in mild liquids. Eat soft or pareed foods. And use lip balm. Management of diarrhea, watery stools. Your gastrointestinal tract nerves are affected by chemo so that food and water rush through. Use over-the-counter Imodium tabs according to the package directions and rest the GI tract for a few hours after experiencing watery diarrhea. Then avoid this list of foods and drinks that can aggravate the GI system. Rectal skin is tender and easily irritated when you are experiencing diarrhea. Clean this area with warm water. Pat, don't rub. Use flushable wipes instead of toilet paper. A triple antibiotic ointment like polysporin or neosporin and a skin barrier cream such as zinc oxide may be helpful. Call if your fluid loss is greater than your fluid consumption. The BRAT diet is also helpful in managing diarrhea. After using Imodium and resting the GI tract for up to 8 hours, begin slowly with fluids and the BRAT diet. Do drink plenty of non-caffeinated fluid. Eat smaller, more frequent meals, starting with the BRAT diet. Slowly add foods low in fiber. Examples are white bread, ripe bananas, and canned fruit. Eat potassium-rich foods such as bananas and potatoes. If you have three or more episodes of watery stools after following all these guidelines, call us. It's likely you will need to have additional medication and intravenous replacement fluid. Keeping adequately hydrated and avoiding dehydration is extremely important. Mild to moderate dehydration is likely to increase nausea, aggravate and contribute to mouth sores, and cause decreased urine output. If your urine is clear or light color, that means you're well hydrated. If your urine is dark or amber colored, that usually signals dehydration. So when you see your urine is dark, drink more water. Mild to moderate dehydration can also cause headaches, constipation, dizziness or lightheadedness. Other possible indications of dehydration can include fatigue, very low energy level, depression, sleepiness, and even being disoriented. Call if any of these are occurring. Water and juices help flush the irritating waste products of chemotherapy from your cells that occur during the metabolic process. These waste products of metabolism can cause you to have flu-like aching if not adequately flushed through your system. Bladder and kidney irritation. Change in color of urine is sometimes caused by a drug you are taking. Check with the RN or oncologist to see if this could be the case. If you experience the first five symptoms listed here, try increasing your water intake markedly by two or three eight ounce glasses. If your symptoms persist, worsen, or you develop a fever, notify your oncology nurse and physician right away you may have a urinary tract infection. Management of fatigue. Fatigue ranges from lethargy to complete exhaustion. Remember to rank and document in your notebook your fatigue on a zero to 10 scale. Zero is normal energy for tasks of daily living and work. A 10 rating means you don't feel like doing anything except resting. Fatigue is the body's message to you to conserve your energy. Pace yourself. Take breaks. Get enough rest and enough light exercise. Get up slowly. Ask for help. Eat well. Green leafy vegetables, meat, cheese, legumes, protein, complex carbohydrates are all nutrient-dense foods. Avoid empty calorie foods like sugary and processed foods. Contributing factors towards your fatigue includes underlying cancer, chemo, radiation, surgery, decreased blood counts, decreased sleep, pain, stress, and decreased appetite and fluid intake. 
Conserve your energy for the people and the activities that are important to you. Take a holistic approach such as meditation, prayer, yoga, guided imagery and visualization to help combat fatigue and feeling low. Be aware that Cancer Care Northwest offers counseling as a part of your care to help you get through this journey. Ask your oncologist or nurse about this service. Alopecia means hair loss. Chemo damages hair follicles so the hair breaks off at the scalp. Not all chemotherapy drugs cause hair loss. Discuss with your oncologist if hair loss is expected with your treatment. Hair can begin falling out after about three weeks of treatment. If you experience hair loss, protect from loss of body heat while sleeping by wearing a lightweight soft knit hat. Hair grows back. It may be a different texture or color at first, but it usually grows back at about a half inch per month. Hair loss can be anywhere on the body. So if you lose your eyelashes, protect your eyes with glasses or sunglasses. Hair and scalp care. You may want to cut your hair short as it usually all starts to fall out over a few days. It can clog up your drains and rub off on your pillows. If hair becomes dry or brittle, use a mild shampoo and conditioner. Use soft hair brushes. When using a hair dryer, only use low heat. Avoid the sun. Use sunscreen, hat, or scarf. Avoid dyeing, perming, or relaxing your hair. Consider purchase of a wig before hair is gone. Primary and chemo nurses can suggest resources. Insurance may cover the purchase of a wig. Note, cryotherapy, which is a cooling hat worn during chemotherapy infusion, is expensive and has not been demonstrated to prevent hair loss. Skin changes. Most skin problems are not serious. You want to avoid hot baths and hot showers and use lots of moisturizer. It's important to protect your skin from the sun. Use sunscreen faithfully, even on those cloudy days when you're outside. Your fingernails and toenails may become darkened, brittle, cracked, or develop vertical lines or bands and become fragile. Use moisturizer to protect them and keep them clean and trimmed. Do not use artificial nails or gel polish during chemotherapy because these may lead to infection and permanently damage your nails. Peripheral neuropathy. Some medications you may be using and chemotherapy can cause tingling, burning, numbness, and cold sensitivity of your hands, fingers, and feet. Chemo can also make muscles weak, tired, and sore. Signs and symptoms may or may not include loss of balance, clumsiness, difficulty picking up objects and buttoning clothes, walking problems, jaw pain, tingling in ears or hearing loss, stomach pain, constipation, and hiccups. These symptoms are usually temporary but they may persist. Be sure to document any of them in your notebook that you take to your office visit so your oncologist can evaluate and address them. There are medications to treat neuropathy symptoms, including intractable hiccups. You will need to avoid tight-fitting clothes, socks, shoes, and gloves. Sexual function and fertility. Side effects for men and women depend on the chemo agent used, the dosage given, age, and general health. Love, intimacy, and touching is very important for human health. Please talk to your oncologist about any concerns you have about sexual function and fertility. If your oncologist has not discussed fertility issues with you as age appropriate, be sure you have that discussion with him or her before before you start chemotherapy. If you wish to egg or sperm bank, it must be done before you begin chemotherapy treatment. Make the most of your office time with your oncologist provider. Use your spiral notebook to write questions as they occur to you at home or while talking to your family members, including any questions they may have. 
Write down symptoms and possible side effects you're experiencing. What makes them worse and what relieves them? It's best to request any needed drug refills during your office visit. When calling for pain med refills, allow 24 hours. Plan so that you are not calling for pain refills in the late afternoon any day and especially on a Friday. Call your pharmacy for other refills. Prescriptions from other doctors should be refilled by them. Take a relative or friend to your office visit. It helps to have someone else also listening to what your provider wants you to know. Bring copies of test results from other offices. We may already have received the results, but if we haven't, it really helps expedite your treatment and so the provider can go over it with you. Ask as many questions as you want and keep asking questions until you understand the information. Your providers appreciate this kind of preparedness. It helps both the provider and the patient get the most out of the office visit for comprehensive care. If a physician other than your Cancer Care Northwest provider would like you to have an add-on lab test for them when you are here, you must bring a signed order by that physician. We will be happy to add the test onto any labs we are also doing for you while you're in the clinic. However, if you are not scheduled for any laboratory tests at Cancer Care Northwest that day, our lab cannot draw labs for an outside provider only. This is due to the limitations of our in-house laboratory license. Our laboratory is not an independent licensed lab. Things to remember when you're preparing to come for chemo. Eat a light breakfast before you come to the clinic for treatment. Take scheduled medications unless otherwise directed. No children in chemo. No pets in chemo. Try not to wear perfumes or scented lotions. Many people are allergic to fragrances. The effect of chemo on the olfactory nerves can cause patients to be very sensitive to fragrances and can even trigger nausea. You may bring or order in food. Be sure to bring your pain medications. This is so important, just in case you need them while you're in the chemo suite for treatment. If using oxygen at home, bring a full portable tank and tubing or your portable oxygen concentrator. Wear layered clothing. Some things to know for approximately 48 hours post chemo. Flush the toilet with the lid down to prevent toilet plume. When a toilet is flushed, the swirling water that removes the waste from the bowl also mixes with small particles of that waste, shooting invisible aerial sized waste into the air. Chemo drug is present in this waste up to 48 hours. Keep the lid down to prevent pets from drinking the water. Any residual chemotherapy waste is toxic to animals. Use barrier protection during intercourse. Linens contaminated with body fluids should be washed twice in hot water and soap. Chemo scheduling. The amount of time you spend in the treatment suite may be any time from a few minutes to eight hours, depending on the treatment regimen. We schedule between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. If your treatment is less than three hours, it will usually need to be scheduled in the afternoon. This is crucial to accommodate the many patients who have longer treatments so that delays do not occur. Treatments of seven to eight hours will be scheduled the day after your office visit with your provider. Please be patient with the schedulers. They try to be as flexible as possible. During your visit at Cancer Care, we provide TVs with headphones in the chemo suite. Wi-Fi hotspot internet access is also available, but you need to ask the nurse for the password. Blankets, pillows, snacks, coffee, hot water, ice water, juices, sodas, and various nutritional supplement drinks. These items are free to you. Cancer Care Northwest provides patients with extensive support resources, including nutritionists, financial patient advocates, and services in group and single settings with our social workers and counselors. See details in the resources portion of your new patient packet. Inquire with your nurse or nurse practitioner or physician or any Cancer Care Northwest staff 
to help connect you to these professionals. Be aware that you are not alone. This is your support team at Cancer Care Northwest who will treat you like family.